Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how to fix the procedural animation issue when trying to use it with baked animations. Remember, just because it worked for me does not necessarily mean it will work for you. So I'm sharing a link to a Unity 3D forum where people face similar issues but had different solutions. This link is the closest good source I have found that may help you if my solution doesn't work. Also, I have uploaded this tutorial project to my GitHub. The GitHub link is in the description below. For this tutorial, I'm using Unity 3D version 2020.3.3F1. Okay, first create a new project and call it Tutorial Procedural Animation Fix. Make sure the 3D template is selected and then hit the Create button. Once the project opens, it is best to organize the project, select the root folder named Asset and create a new folder and name it similar to the project name, which is Tutorial Procedural Animation Fix. Inside the folder, create four new folders and name them underscore scenes, models, scripts and animations. Now go inside the underscore scene folder and create a new scene and name it test1. Now let's install the animation rigging package which will help us in creating procedural animation. Select window then package manager. If it says packages in project then click it and select unity registry. Now it will say packages unity registry. Select animation rigging and click the install button here. Wait till it gets installed. Once it gets installed, you will see a new tab called animation rigging. Close the package manager. I made this character model during one of Bracky's game jam, so I thought it would be best to use this model here since it has all the animations that I need. I exported the model in FBX and just dragged and dropped it in the model folder. Usually when we want to animate humanoid models, we make some certain changes so that the model will animate properly. So let's do that. Select the model under the rig tab, click the drop down button for the animation type and select humanoid. Then click apply button. That is it for making sure humanoid models animate properly. We need to make some changes for the animations. So select the animation tab. Here you will see all the animations of this model. Scroll down and find the run animation. Select the run animation, then scroll further down. Now enable the loop time of this animation by clicking it. Now click apply button. This will loop the running animation. Now let's create an animator controller so that the model can animate. Go to the animations folder, right click and then go to create and finally select animator controller. Name it player. Alright, now double click the player animator controller. This should open up the animator window. Select the model folder and scroll down till you find the run animation. Drag and drop the run animation into the animator window. This will automatically create a transition link to the run animation. Now, open up the scene window again, drag and drop the character model into the scene, add the newly created player animator controller to the model, also disable apply root motion. Save everything and run the game. Awesome, the model is doing the run animation. Alright, now let's make use of the procedural animation. Stop the gameplay, select the model in the scene, then select animation rigging and then go down and select rig setup. This will apply all the necessary rigging needed for procedural animation. Now, to make life more easier, make sure the model is still being selected in the scene. Select animation rigging again and this time select bone renderer setup. This will show all the bones present in the model which will help us in creating the procedural animation. Now, open the model's hierarchy. Inside you will find a new game object called rig1. If you select this game object, you will see it has a script called rig, which has a float value called weight. Basically, you can have multiple rig objects to make procedural animations the way you want and can use the weight value on how much each rig objects have influence on the character bones. For more details, I have linked to the rig script doc. You will find more information there. We are not going to use this weight value, so make sure the value of weight is 1. Okay. 
Now create a child game object inside the rig and name it right hand rig. Select right hand rig and then select add component. Select animation rigging and finally select two bone IK constraint. This is the script that will allow us to make the animation in the right hand procedurally. Alright, now we need to fill up all of these transforms. So select the right hand bone. You can either select the bone directly from the scene window or you could use the hierarchy to find the right hand. In this case, the right hand is called hand.r. Drag and drop hand.r into tip. Drag and drop lower arm.r into mid. Finally, drag and drop upper arm.r into root. Now, for target and hint, we need to make two new game objects. The target specifies where the hand should be and how to rotate the hand and the hint influences how the bones should rotate. So right click right hand rig and create a new game object called target. Let's help to visualize the target by clicking the plus button here. Give it a green color and increase the size to 0.5. You can hide the gizmos to better see the target locator. Now create another game object called hint. Let's visualize this one as well. Make it ball effector and change its size to 0.15. Excellent. Now select right hand rig again. Now drag and drop target into target. Finally drag and drop hint into hint. Keep the other values as is. Now let's place the target and the hint in better position. Place the target in this vector position and place the hint in this vector position. Alright, now let's do same thing for the left hand. Now save and run the game. As you can see, this is not what we wanted. If you look up, you can see the character is running there. From my research and testing, I have found that using both procedural animations and baked animations together causes this issue. So if I remove the avatar from the model's animator and run the project, this will stop the baked animation from working but will allow the procedural animation to work. Fortunately, there is a fix around this. First, select the character model in the models folder. Then go to the rig tab. Change animation type to generic. Next, make sure avatar definition has create from this model selected. Now change root node to hips. In your case, the root node should be the main bone of the armature. That is, the bone when moved will move other bones with it. Then click the apply button. Now, select the character model in the scene, give it the new avatar that has just been created. Save and run the project. Excellent, it worked. Now you can see that both the procedural and baked animations are working together. Let's place and rotate the hand targets properly so that they don't seem to be twisting. You can do the fixed position and rotation while the game is playing. Make sure the right hand's target game object is selected. Now copy the fixed position and rotation value by right clicking the transform and selecting copy component. Stop the game, right click the target's transform again and select paste component values. Now let's do the same thing for the left hand. Finally, let's change the light direction so that we can see what is happening in front of the player model. Awesome, let's play the game again. Now it looks way better. Let's create a very simple script to move the hands around. Select the scripts folder, right click and create a new C sharp script. Call it move hand. Open the script. Create a private transform called underscore hand. 
this will be the hands target that will be moved then create a private vector 3 called underscore target 1 and another one called underscore target 2. These two vectors will be the points where the hand will move towards. Then create a private float called underscore speed which will be the speed of the hand movement. Finally, we shall create a private vector 3 called underscore current target. This will be the current target towards which the hand will move to. In the start method, we shall set the first current target value, which is the first target. So underscore current target equals underscore target one. Now in the update method, we shall move the hand and toggle between the targets. So firstly, if underscore current target does not equal to underscore hand dot local position, then this means that the hand must keep moving till the target has been reached. So underscore hand dot local position equals to vector 3 dot move towards and we are going to move from current position which is underscore hand dot local position to underscore target position with a speed of underscore speed times time dot delta time this will move the hand towards the target and will never overshoot but instead will stop at the target position I will link to Unity 3D's vector 3 dot move towards docs in the description below if you want to know more about it. So this is for moving the hand. Now let's give a condition for what to do when the hand has reached the target. Now else underscore current target equals to if underscore current target equals to underscore target 1 then make it underscore target 2 else make it underscore target 1. I use ternary operator here to make the toggle. I like using it because it makes multiple if else conditions into one line. Basically what it means over here is that underscore current target equals to if underscore current target equals to underscore target one then return underscore target two value else return underscore target one value. This is helping to toggle between the two targets. Save everything and let's go back to the editor. Now drag and drop the move hand script into right hand rig object like so. Now let's set up the values. The target should go in hand. Give the first target value to this and the second target value to this. Give a speed of 0.5. Now drag and drop the move hand script into left hand rig object like so. Again let's set up the values. The target goes in hand. Give the first target value to this. And the second target value to this give a speed of 0.25 now save and run the project voila the hands are being moved through script procedurally up to this your procedural animation will work but if you want to use masking in the animator then it is a bit different than humanoid avatars select the animations folder Right click and go to create and then select avatar mask and name it torso arms. Now select the torso arms. In the inspector the humanoid part will not work because it is not a humanoid model. So open the transform. In use skeleton from select the avatar for this model and click the import skeleton button. Now over here you must select the bones that you want to mask manually. So deselect everything first. Open up the armature. Enable hips then open up hips, enable spine and open it, enable chest and open it. Now press and hold alt and enable shoulder.l and shoulder.r. This will enable all the maskings under those bones as well. Now we are done with making the mask and let's apply it in the animator. Open the animator window. Under the layers tab create a new layer called torso arms layer. Click the setting button for this layer which is the gear icon and make weight to 1 and the mask to the one we just made. Make sure blending is override. Now select the model folder and drag and drop the default animation. Now save everything and go back to scene window and play the project. As you can see the masking has worked. The torso and arms part of the model is doing the default animation while the legs and head are doing the running animations. The procedural animation is still working with masking as well.
So this concludes this tutorial. Again, you will find all the resources for this project in my GitHub and I have linked to it in the description below. Tell me in the comment section if this worked for you and please like and subscribe. That will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Alright, so take care, stay safe and care out.